Hey folks, hope you're doing well. So today I'm back to the lavalier mic just to mix things up a little bit. I don't know if the audio is going to be better or worse or same, different, whatever. And so I want to talk about my favorite Super Nintendo games, as the title says. And uh, the SNES was my first proper gaming console. Now that's a little insulting to Atari, but I had the Atari 2600 before that, while well, my some of my friends had an NES, and it was just... Alright, so this is going to be in fairly loose order. I tried to order them, you know, by going by my top three and then the others, but it's, it's difficult. A lot of these, you might as well flip. They are kind of interchangeable. So let's start out with number one. Again, loose number one. I pick Secret of Mana. I recently started playing it again, revisiting it, and also the remake to compare, and there's definitely a bit of nostalgia glasses going on. Like, when I, when I play it again now, I definitely notice issues and annoyances that I didn't back in the day, or not so much. Now, it has aged, of course, obviously. It's quite an old game by now. But it's still pretty damn good, in my opinion. The remake is okay. Like it, it's not very impressive to me. Like I would have preferred if they had done HD 2D graphics rather than going 3D. But you know, they made some sensical improvements. But overall, yeah. Anyway, so definitely one of my favorites as a kid. And I, I played it quite a bit. On second, I put Illusion of Gaia. You know, I don't think a lot of people would necessarily put this on second place, but I enjoyed it a whole lot back then when I played it. And it's just, it's a great game. Being able to switch characters is, is really nice, even though I always find it, find it frustrating that there's only specific spots where you can transform into the others. Basically, I just wanted to play as Frieden most of the time. Will is just... Uh, whatever, just just some dude with a flute. Then on second place, I put Super Metroid. I don't really need to say anything, do I? It's Super Metroid. I mean, it defined the Metroidvania genre, as we now use the term. Such a polished game, and, and so just everything is spot on they did such a great job with it like just want anything it was, it's got annoying parts just like every game of course and sometimes you definitely have this where the hell do i go kind of thing going on but it's there's just, just very little frustration and overall it's just a smooth experience and back in the day it was kind of a big deal you know revisiting uh, areas that you've been to before and you know getting new abilities and power-ups that allow you to get to places that you couldn't before and exploring the map and all that was amazing at the time and it still holds up pretty well in my opinion next one is super castlevania 4 uh, that one always has a special place in my gamer heart as cheesy as that sounds because it was one of the first two that I got. I got the Super Nintendo with uh, Super Mario World and Super Castlevania 4. And I remember it was on Christmas and I sat in my room, you know, all darkened with just candles burning and playing Super Castlevania 4. It was awesome. It was like the perfect first experience of the game. And I was pretty much blown away by it at the time. And I still find it amazing that Simon Belmont in, in Super Castlevania 4 is the only one who has full mastery of the whip. Nobody else can whip in all directions the same way he does. It's like, why has this not become standard? Every Belmont should be able to whip diagonally, up and down, everything, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty cool. And um, there were a number of creative levels uh, particularly the the rotating level is really awesome bosses are pretty cool uh, the fight against dracula is very memorable all of that chrono trigger one of the all-time best rpgs i don't think i have to say much do i next up secret of evermore another action adventure that i highly enjoyed it's got the 
time travel thing going on where you um, you, know, you start out in the Stone Age and then you, you know, go through antiquity and then other time periods until you're in, in the futuristic environment and really really nicely done um, they also it's it's kind of a nice touch that the the main character's dog kind of transforms like in, in the Stone Age is he's some kind of huge shaggy wolf like beast and uh, in what was it in the in the middle ages he's like a a poodle if i remember correctly and in the future it turns into some kind of toaster thing it's it's pretty funny and uh, definitely a, a very well done game as well would highly recommend checking i mean I, i'd recommend checking all of these out obviously and uh, then i put zelda link to the past that was actually the first zelda game i played because i never had an nes I didn't get to play the original Zeldas, so that was the first one I got. But uh, it was one hell of an entry in, into the series, in my opinion. That, that worked out quite nicely. Um, still holds up reasonably well, and um, especially considering that it's, it was one of the earlier games that came out on the system. And um, yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, like it. The Dark World is nice you know switching back and forth between the two excellent gameplay design interesting bosses etc etc uh, then i put uh, super street fighter 2 uh, at first i actually had street fighter 2 turbo and uh, then i got super which was pretty awesome that's just like the definitive edition of street fighter to me i mean later street fighter street fighter alpha was pretty awesome but it's like still to me when i think street fighter i think super street fighter 2 that's that's kind of that's it that's a thing for me then killer instinct these two i could easily flip like killer instinct to me was freaking awesome it's pretty much as significant to the fighting genre as street fighter in my opinion like it's it was substantially different there were a lot of other fighting games that tried to emulate street fighter but didn't succeed very well or only to a limited degree killer instinct did its own thing and did it really damn well later i found out about the arcade version which is pretty impressive I mean, the super nintendo did a good job you know considering the hardware limitations they did a pretty good job of porting killer instinct to it but the arcade of course is you know, quite a bit more impressive looking and finally turtles in time I was a major Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan as a kid and this game is again highly polished, extremely well done. Um, time traveling again is pretty freaking awesome. The way it's done, it's you know smooth controls, uh, very satisfying moves and you know the you know, sounds and impact and animation just spot on really and uh, you know, going through the different time periods is quite awesome uh, shredder at the end is pretty badass and of course playing that with a friend is freaking awesome and what is it with with me and time travel games <laughs> there's a number of them secret of evermore chrono trigger turtles in time i seem to seem to appreciate that well it's just it adds something interesting because you have drastically changing environments and all that and then some honorable mentions uh, th this list could be could go on forever there are so many good games for the super nintendo but uh, just a few picks here uh, super mario world i mean as standard and basic as it is uh, that's what the super nintendo came with but it's just a really good mario game you can't argue with that it's one of the best and yeah it's good <laughs> Well, that's all I can say. Uh, Parodius, so freaking weird, but good gameplay too. It's not just the weirdness, but it's. I often think I I don't get probably seventy percent of the game or so, because it's very Japanese, and I'm sure there are plenty of you know, Japanese cultural references that I don't get. I mean, I see a lot of them that I, that I do recognize, but. I'm pretty sure there's so much that I just that goes right over my head, but pretty cool. So um, Breath of Fire 2, another really good RPG that I enjoyed quite a bit. 
Uh, Batman Returns. This was another one. Like, I wanted to put this on the top 10, but there's so many other great ones that, yeah, this just made it to the honorable mentions. But uh, and fighting in that one, this beat em up is top notch. And um, they, it's one of the few cases where they, they really nailed a uh, movie adaptation of a video game. Back then, the rule of thumb was if it's a video game based on a movie, it's crap. Like, the vast majority of them were horrible. This was a major exception. This Batman Returns, really freaking good. And uh, I, I played through it several times, always enjoyed it. Just uh, being able to grab some clown and slam them into the window is shattering. Pretty satisfying. And finally, Weapon Lord. This one I also wanted to put on the top 10, but you know, it, it just got crowded. Uh, another fighting game that just was very different. It, it did its own thing and it did it very well. And it had fatalities, kind of hidden. It didn't do it the same way as Mortal Kombat, where it's like, finish him, but certain special moves, if you finish them off with, they, it'll cause some mayhem. And yeah, pretty cool art style. Uh, very, very 90s fantasy, like steroid barbarians and all that, but quite well done and uh, it pushed the Super Nintendo pretty far in terms of hardware, you know, just like Chrono Trigger did. Yeah, that's about it. Um, there are lots of other good ones. I still haven't actually played Terranigma. This was like one of the last games that came out for the system at that time. I think at that time I had a PS1 already, but uh, from what I've heard, it's one of the absolute best games, and there's so many other good ones. Let's talk about it in the comments. What are your favorite games? Let me know, and thanks for watching. Game on, folks.